Okay, we have seen statistical significance numbers like 91% or 78%. You might have heard people saying that 95% is the sufficient confidence level when it gets to statistical significance. Some say the best practice is 90%, others say 99%. But what's the truth? What is good enough? What is too low? What is too high? For that, you will have to understand first what does 80% confidence level mean? What does 95% mean? What does 99% mean? And what does 100%? To answer these questions, first let me show you another concept that you might remember from high school statistics lectures. That's the concept of false positives and false negatives. The concept of false positives and false negatives is commonly used in another part of data science, in predictive analytics, where you try to predict the future. And if you think about it, when evaluating an A-B test result, you do a prediction as well. You try to predict the probability that the result of your test will repeat itself in the future. One of the best explanations I've heard about false positives and false negatives was in Dr. David Weissman's presentation, who took it from a science paper back from 1968. It's an everyday life situation. Let's say you are a husband, you go home, but you can't remember whether today is your anniversary or not. But you try to predict and decide whether you should bring flowers or not. Here are all the possible scenarios. It is your anniversary and you buy flowers, everyone's happy. This is a true positive. It is not your anniversary, but you buy flowers, but that's a false positive. Your losses are minimal, your wife gets suspicious and you're shorter with $6. It is your anniversary, but you do not buy flowers. That's the worst possible scenario. Wife in tears, you in dark house. And from statistical standpoint, this is what we call a false negative. And eventually, it is not your anniversary, and you do not buy flowers. Then nothing happens. This is a true negative. Let's see this with an A-B testing example. Our version B seems winning, and we want to figure out whether our winning version B is better in real life too. So the vertical part of the matrix is what we got as a result in our experiment, version B or new version 1 or didn't win. We will compare that to what happens after the experiment. Version B indeed has a higher conversion rate or it doesn't. If version B has won the A-B test and then after publishing it, it keeps delivering better results, that's a true positive. Everyone's happy, you are the colleague of the month. If version B has won, but in real life it turns out that it doesn't bring better results, or it even brings worse results, that's a false positive. And for an online business, that's a disaster. So it is for your career, by the way, as you will have to explain to everyone that a mistake has happened and that something's off with the promised conversion rate increase, so it's not too good. Version B didn't win on the test, but would have won in real life, that's a false negative, and that's not ideal either, because you lose money by not using the better converting new version, but usually since version B didn't win, that means that it wasn't published, so you never truly find out whether it was a false positive or not. And when B didn't win, and it wasn't better, that status quo, nothing happens. I hope you see the similarity between the two examples, but realize one more thing. In different situations, we optimize against different outcomes sometimes against false positives, sometimes against false negatives. In the anniversary example, we try to avoid the greatest disaster, false negative, not buying flowers on our anniversary. Buying flowers sometimes, when it's not our anniversary, is not the end of the world. Well, if we want to be realistic, sometimes it's a pretty nice thing. But a false negative, in this case, is a disaster. But in A-B tests, we always try to avoid false positives. Changing something that we are not certain of and is a winner only seemingly and then delivering neutral or potentially worse results is a disaster. Optimizing against false positives is a key thought when interpreting statistical significance. With that in mind, go back to our question. What is a sufficient level of statistical significance? What does an 80% confidence level mean? It means that simply put, and statistically speaking, one out of five experiments will show you fake results. Let's say you ran 100 winning A-B tests, on average, 20 of them will show you fake results, 
they only seem winning, but in real life, they will deliver the same or worse results than your original version. What does 95% mean? It means that this number decreases to 1 out of 20. From 100 winning A-B tests, only 5 will show fake results. When your confidence level is 99%, your false positive rate will be only 1 out of 100 A-B tests. Many people don't really get this concept, but because in an A-B test we optimize against false positives, the difference between using 80% confidence levels and 99% confidence levels is not 19%. The real difference is 2000%, more concretely, 20 times fewer fake results. That's a real difference, right? With that said, choosing your sufficient level of statistical significance will be your decision. If your risk tolerance is higher, you can go with a lower confidence level number, like 90%, if your risk tolerance is smaller, you can go with 95% or 99%. The scientifically accepted number that most people use is 95%. I personally always aim for 99%. But now that you know the real difference between these numbers, you can make up your own mind. And one last question, what does 100% confidence level mean? In A-B testing, it doesn't exist. Experimenting always contains some sort of uncertainty, and you can never be 100% certain that your results are true positives. But using the right level of statistical significance and the right confidence level targets, you can minimize this risk to be negligible.